Hi guys, welcome back to A Page in the Chapter, or welcome if you are new here. My name is Paige, and today we are reacting to my five star predictions. I think that I have read all of the books that were in this video. I haven't checked, in all honesty. We'll find out together, and if I haven't, I'm still gonna make the video, because I'm here. I'm all dressed up with nowhere to go. I did originally want to do this as a drinking game, but in all honesty, I just, I don't want to drink today. I don't have any mixer in the house, and I'm just, I'm not feeling it. But I want to get this video done before I completely forget to do it. So we're just gonna do this as a normal, let's go through my five star predictions kind of video, and maybe next time, I will do my drinking game idea. Today is just, today's just not the day. It's not my day, it's not the day, it's just a day. If you guys are like what you have seen so far and you would like to see more of me, do feel free to hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. I upload twice a week on a Wednesday and a Friday. So there is no shortage of bookish content here for you to enjoy. And I think this is like the last of the autumnal content before we get into Christmas and end of the year content. As you can see, the autumn lights have come down in preparation for the Christmas lights to go up this weekend. It's all exciting times around here. Do feel free to also check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Page and Chapter so you can get more up to date behind the scenes on what I'm reading as I'm reading it and you guys can also choose what I am reading. Throughout the month of December I am entirely letting you guys choose which books off my TBR I read and when. So if you want to be a part of that follow me on Instagram. And now let's check out what books I thought were going to be five stars. I have no idea how this is going to go because I have the memory of a goldfish. So the first book that I mentioned as a five star prediction was A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood and this is a kind of Great Gatsby retelling set in 1920s Cornwall. I read this one super recently, like last week recently. So I have very up-to-date thoughts on this one, but let's see what past me thought it would be like. It just sounds very, very cozy, a perfect like autumn, cozy night read. I really hope that this English weather becomes a little bit cooler in October so I can actually enjoy these books in some autumnal weather. So I thought this was going to be a very perfect cozy autumn night read. It's a beautiful book and I didn't give it five stars but I gave it four and a half stars. It was so so close. I'm just trying to be a little bit stricter about what I give five stars now. And I wouldn't say that this was the perfect cozy autumn night read. It actually gave me more summery vibes. It's got nothing to do with the content of this song but the feel of this book is the same as The Sound as August by Taylor Swift. They both make me think of like very grey summer days on like Rhode Island. That's the vibe. I don't know if it makes any sense to anyone except for me. It was a much more light-hearted book than I kind of expected it to be. The book talks a lot about how this glitz and glamour lifestyle might have a darker side, it might have secrets, and when these secrets were kind of revealed I was like oh that's you know a little bit to be expected. Um, it didn't really strike me as odd, I didn't think it was anything like massively dark and mysterious that this book was building to. That did not dock the 0.5 star from it though. I kind of liked the fact that it was a lighter hearted read, especially if you're reading this in the summer, that's what you want. I think the branding of this book is perfect for the whole Great Gatsby 1920s vibe, but I think they maybe could have gone for a lighter blue. Obviously the, the cover looks beautiful, the cover's perfect, but the cover does also make me think that this is a winter book and it it's just not a winter book. It doesn't fit the vibes of winter or autumn. It's cozy but it's like a summer cozy, not a autumn cozy. Am I making any sense today? I don't know. But basically the only reason I docked the 0.5 stars from this book is just it didn't give me that feeling. It didn't give me that Taylor Jenkins read, this book is gonna be like the best book I've ever read for many years to come type of feeling. And as I said, I'm trying to be a little bit stricter. So I gave it 4.5 because I think it was so close. It was literally just missing the feeling. That's all, like, everything else about it was so cozy and fun. And it does have a romance element in it if you are worried about it being a bit boring. It is very character driven and if you don't like character driven books it might be a bit boring but I feel like the romance element 
and this journey of like self-discovery element really did help kind of like propel the plot along so it worked for me in all honesty. Let's find out the next book that I predicted to be a five star read. The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. So I then talked about The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman which is a kind of spooky retelling of The Jungle Book. It is about our main character Nobody Owens who is raised in a graveyard by ghosts and is taught by these ghosts and is just kind of left to wander the graveyard and discover what like all the different creepy things and different creatures that exist in a graveyard whilst also discovering that the real human world is also quite a scary and terrifying place. Let's see what I thought of it back in September. It's by an author that I know is very talented and I've read before and really enjoyed. It's creepy, it's spooky, it is the perfect book for Halloween and I, I just think it's all gonna come together. So I talked about how I think timing is gonna make or break this book and I, maybe that was the issue. I read this right at the beginning of October. It was a very or not the very first book, but the second book that I read for the Magical Hopathon. And maybe it was just too early for me to be in the spooky Halloween vibes, I don't know. But basically, I only gave this a three stars. I wanted to like it so badly. I said in that video that I love Stardust, I gave that five stars. Stardust is on my December TBR as a reread because I loved it that much. This just didn't live up to the same cosy vibes as Stardust did. Maybe if, as I said, maybe if I had read it on Halloween, it would have been better. But also when I put it on my story that I only gave this like a three stars, other people reached out to me and said that they read it as an audiobook and gave it five stars and they loved the audiobook or they listened to the audiobook whilst they were like doing something like spooky and like it just made the vibes immaculate. So maybe I just read this in the wrong format. I will say this book is illustrated and that like really like helped me enjoy it a lot more. It felt like a, a big experience reading this book. To me the middle bit felt very disjointed from the rest of the story. The beginning and the end have a very clear plot that link together and then the middle bit is very much just like little short stories about Bod in this graveyard. Honestly I think I would have preferred if it was just one like detailed plot rather than feeling like lots of little cute short stories you know. I still highly recommend this book definitely keep it on the back burner for Halloween next year just learn from my mistakes maybe pick up the audiobook of this one. I then put A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer R. Armantrout on this list and I said that I was very unsure about whether I would give it five stars. I've seen it going around on book talk specifically people really really enjoying this and I gave the first book a four stars so hopefully now that I'm already kind of situated in this world it's been a good couple months since I read the first book but I do actually remember everything from it which is another sign of a good book. So the logic behind this one really was that I gave the first book four stars, really really enjoyed it, really gave me the fangirl vibes and I guess I was just kind of thinking that with this book particularly going around on book talk and being like the perfect smutty vibes and everybody talking about it. I think my logic was that I would maybe, this book would maybe be worth that like one star extra, it would improve. I did give this book four stars. So it's not the five stars that I maybe thought it would be, but this book was on a par with the first book in the series. It didn't get worse. I really, really enjoyed this book. So basically for my own personal enjoyment, I love this book and I rated it four stars because I personally enjoyed it so much. I read it at the perfect time for me. I was really in a romance mood. I had been waiting all month to read this book. The smut was just the perfect amount of like romance, fantasy and smut. Like I really like books that balance it that well. If it's just like smutsy and after smutsy and then I get really bored but this I felt like kept me waiting just enough in between each scene that it was enjoyable. However, looking at it objectively I would have rated it lower than a four stars. I think as a fantasy this book was very weak. To me Jennifer L. Armantrout is a romance author. She writes a lot of fantasy romances yes but I think the main parts of her book are romances. Those are the main elements. That is the plot driver usually is the romance and the fantasy in this one was just weak. To me it was just too confusing. There were too many elements 
even by the end of the second book, I didn't really quite understand the magic system or what kind of creature our main character is or the politics of this world. It still doesn't really make sense to me. I think the romance was good enough to save it and still was like the romance was the whole reason that I was reading this book and why I came to love it. But if I had been in a fantasy mood and I picked up this book I would have been heavily disappointed by it and it did fall into the second book trap a little bit of just being a bit info dumpy really slowing right down and nothing really happening right until the end. However I do appreciate that we had a second book in a trilogy where a love triangle was not brought in and the characters did not like break up. I also really appreciated that Jennifer L. Armentrout kept finding reasons for these characters to not be together that were like unique and again not them like introducing another love interest. I think more books should be doing that. I was constantly still having like a will they won't they in the second book when it's already happened in the first book but she found a way to get the will they won't they without making me hate the characters or hate her writing. To me personally it was a four stars but I don't think objectively it was a four stars and I would be careful going into this book on my recommendation because my recommendation is based purely on the romance side. So the next book that I mentioned in this video was A Man Called Uwe and I could not pronounce it then. I think I know how to pronounce it now and let's see what I have to say about this book. I do think that this is going to be a five star read. It's very short, it seems very cosy, very heartwarming. This is kind of like an up sort of book. Um, I don't the blurb doesn't give much away, no one on booktube really gives much away about the plot of this book and let me tell you now that it is entirely intentional. You want to go into this book not knowing the plot, trust me, it's a massive spoiler if you know the premise of the book. So I would go into this blind. I thought that I would give this book a five stars based purely on the up vibes and the fact that it is about a very grumpy old man becoming a bit more, a bit less grumpy a bit more willing to love. It, that wasn't really the reason that I gave it five stars. I think this book deser deserved five stars just purely on how well written and how well structured it was because in the beginning of this book I wasn't particularly enjoying it. I wasn't particularly enjoying reading from Uwe's perspective. He is so grumpy and cantankerous in the beginning and you're reading it and you're just kind of like okay why do I care about any of these things? He keeps going on about cars and tools and building and just stuff that you don't care about anymore. But that's the whole point of the book. We see at the beginning, we read it as everyone who first sees Uwe, as people who don't care about the things that he cares about and who just thinks that he's very grumpy and cares too much about these little things. And then you go through the book and you learn slowly little tidbits of information that are drip, drip fed to you about him and see him in these situations where he is needed and literally at the end of the book there is a line and the line is literally like that's the thing about love it sneaks up on you or something and at that very moment in time you realise that you love Uwe. You realise that he is one of the most well written and easy to love characters in the like any book that I've ever read. And yes I did sob like a freaking baby at the end of this book and literally I was like crying from one page and then read the next page over from it and it would do something that made me laugh. It was the most like genuinely joyful book to read and I had to give it a five stars. I was very right about this one. It is exactly the kind of book that I like to read every now and again. Just one of those like very very difficult to find type of books. Those like there's nothing else out there like it type of books and I just I felt the whole spectrum of emotions in a really good way with this one. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I gave The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue five stars. It was my favourite book of 2020. I think reading this in October when hopefully the weather gets dark and horrible again. I think atmosphere wise this would just give me that five star feeling. The next book that I talked about was Vicious by V.E. Schwab and my logic for this was that I was in the mood for something darker we were getting into October. This is a very dark academia meets fantasy type book in a way that no one else has really done before and I loved 
The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue. And even though they are very, very different books in terms of content and theme, I just kind of thought that my love for V.E. Schwab would force me to give this one a five stars. And spoiler alert, I did not. I did give it four stars though. I still really, really enjoyed this book. Um, to me, my favourite parts of this book were the flashbacks to when they were at school and it was actually dark academia. I didn't enjoy the present day as much. Towards the end of the book, I did start to enjoy the present day parts, but in the middle there I was like no I just want, I want the dark academia flashbacks that's kind of why I'm here um, but I did really really enjoy this book I thought it was unlike anything else that I'd ever read um, still love the cover still one of my favorite covers of any book in existence I just I'm nervous to read the second book now though because if I prefer the flashbacks to the dark academia Is that really gonna be in the second book I won't know until I read it I, I had to dock a star on this one just because it's not the pure dark academia that everyone on booktube kind of sells it to you as it is a mix of fantasy and dark academia but very good nonetheless just not a five star if we were villains by ml rio I'm gonna read it in October because I'm just really in the mood for dark books right now. Because I gave The Secret History five stars, I think I will with this one too. More so in the sense that with these type of books that are really dark, really like academia based, I enjoy the vibes, I enjoy what the authors are trying to do, and I think as long as it is objectively done well, then I would be willing to give it a five stars. And so the next book that I thought would be a five star prediction is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. And my logic for this was I really wanted a classic dark academia book. The most classic dark academia book is A Secret History. I had already read that and I gave it five stars. So I kind of just walked into Waterstones saw this book like very proudly displayed, very obviously displayed. When I was buying these books and planning my October TBR I was really in the mood for darker books and so this fit in with that and I was just in the mood for something a bit more sophisticated. Not that there's like I don't really like that word but that's the only way I can describe it and so I really thought that I would give this five stars. I haven't actually rated this one because I DNF'd it and I don't rate books that I DNF. However, if you saw my October wrap up, I did not DNF this book because I didn't think it was good. I had a massive anxiety flare up whilst I was reading this book and I just couldn't, I couldn't read something so dark academia and just dark in general and about murder and who murdered this person whilst also dealing with that anxiety flare up. That is also when my romance mood kicked in. So I think that this book had the potential to be a four or a five star read. I thought it was very beautifully written. I love the inclusions of Shakespeare, I love that the inclusions of the Shakespeare were then analysed, and I love that the whole book was kind of like structured as a play. I did think that it was done beautifully, I can see why this book is talked about a lot. It just, I read it at the wrong time for me. Um, I don't want to know what happens at the end in case I ever want to go back. Maybe next year I will be doing a little bit better and will reread it. It's not the book's fault, I still recommend it if you want to read it. Oh, and um, that was the last book that I predicted to be five stars. That is, I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting that. I thought there was another book in there. That's honestly a little disappointing that the only five star that I predicted correctly was A Man Called Uwe. The thing is though, at least because I've started being a tiny bit stricter with my five stars, I can't help that I think a lot of books that I enjoy deserve five stars. But I'm trying to be a bit stricter. I know 110% that this book now is actually a five star. And the other book that I rated really highly and was kind of doubting of, oh, should I give it 4.5 or 5, was A Sky Painted Gold. And I can say that A Man Called Uwe is better than A Sky Painted Gold. It is just, I mean, you can't really compare them because they're so different, but it is just kind of on a different level to A Sky Painted Gold so I think it was probably good that I've started being a bit stricter with five stars because I can honestly say with my whole heart that this book is a five stars. So I am a little disappointed that I am bad at knowing myself but most of these books were still really really good and I still rated them really highly even if they weren't five stars. I at least knew that I would enjoy them. I just maybe 
made this video when I thought that I was going to be a bit more free with my five stars. Thank you guys so so much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. Leave some of your five star predictions and failures down in the comments so I know that I am not alone in this. Also let me know if you would want me to do some more five star predictions and then a follow up where I can do the drinking game when I'm in the mood for it hopefully because I only want to make content that you guys will actually enjoy watching. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more do feel free to hit that big red subscribe button I just I want to chat about books and the more there are of you the more chats about books that we can have and it's just exciting I hope that you guys are having a fantastic week you are enjoying everything you are reading and there are no reading slumps in your future and I will see you next week for my next video bye guys